afternoon or good day, everybody, depending on where you're at. My name is Johnny Jennings. I run the Brent Gove real estate team out here in sunny Sacramento, California, and he's driving and so cell service with Spotty. So he asked if I would just come on here and share some sales techniques that we are using to win in today's marketplace. How is everybody doing? Give me a thumbs up. Are you guys good? Awesome. Love it. Got double thumbs up from Tom and a fist bump. Awesome. So what we are going to go over today briefly is we're not going to talk about NAR. I don't know about you, but I am sick and tired of hearing about projections and guessings about what's going to happen with NAR. We're going to let we're going to let the uh, the crystal ball people figure that stuff out. Today we're going to talk about stuff that is actually happening. That that conversations you may have been having that. that left you wishing, mm, I wish there was a way I could have handled that better. Or what would somebody do to earn that person's business? So what we're going to do is we're just going to go over some basic um, objection handling. Just full disclaimer right here. These are not things I came up with. These are things I've learned over years of being in the industry. Um, and I'm always looking for new people to learn from. So if you're taking notes, you're going to want to write some names down. You're going to want to write down, it's a heck of a name, Brandon Mulrennan. Has anybody heard of Brandon Mulrennan before? Really, he's got some great stuff on YouTube. Brandon Mulrennan on, on objection handling. And then another person you're going to want to... Um, Can this be gonna, typed in our room, please? He's That's got a heck of a last name. So I'll type it. But if you copy and paste, you might get something else. Brandon <laughs> Mulrennan. Mulrennan. And then the other one is Jeremy... Lee Miner. And again, I may not be spelling them right, but it'll get you close enough. Jeremy Lee Miner, I see a lot of his stuff on Instagram. Have you guys seen his stuff? He's actually, this guy's really becoming really, really uh, famous quickly about his sales techniques. So, um, oh, and the last one is Dale Archdeacon. Again, I'm sorry, Dale, if I butchered the last name, but I think you'll understand. Um, so, <laughs> A lot of these, a lot of the things that we're about to share, and just we're going to keep it short, but came from um, a combination of these three guys and many others, but definitely these three. So if you're looking for people to follow, for example, Dale has a, a company called Sales Inside Training, where you can actually log in on YouTube for uh, on his courses and listen for free and to go through objection handling and stuff like that. The other two guys, um, I've never paid for any of their products. I'm not like endorsing them. I'm not paid to say any of this. It's just when I'm scrolling through YouTube. It's either um, funny things or sales training, right? My wife's, it's cooking, right? So <laughs> cookies and cooking and babies. So that's that's how I consume these, uh, these guys' information, okay? Yep. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen and we'll get right into it. So, only, of course, Uncle G, right? Grant Cardone um, is also where I picked up a lot of this, a lot of this information. So, who can tell me, come, go ahead and come off mute or put it in the chat box, what the first rule to object, objection handling is? Confirm maybe that you heard them correctly? Yeah, you can repeat it back to them. Yep. But essentially, the, a different way to reframe it is the first thing you don't want to do is tell them they're wrong, right? Right. You don't want to push back. You don't want to be like... Um, yeah, so I heard the market's gonna crash soon, and so I'm gonna wait to buy a house. Oh, you're crazy! The market's doing great. Like that's you do not you do not want to create friction, right? Where out out the gate while you're trying to create. Um, yeah, David Mill says repeat. So when you're trying to create rapport, the last thing you want to do is create friction. So the first rule of objection handling is always always agree. So I can sound like, um, hey, the market's crashing. Hey, I hear that all the time. Hey, I'm with you. You know, I I. I under, I've, I've heard that before. Um, I agree. You can even just say I agree, depending on what the objection is. Hey, I'm nervous about moving forward in the market because I don't know what's going to happen. Hey, I agree. You know, and so just just always just again, you're trying to create. When, oftentimes, when agents go into living rooms or agents sit down and do buyer consultations with clients, it's like they want to show how much knowledge they have because they want to show knowledge and they want to give value, but really. The, the people who succeed at a high level, like the Brent Goves, they sit down and they connect with them on an emotional level. And through that connection, they start building trust. And then once that trust is built, then they can start having more honest conversations about, hey, here's you know what the pricing strategy um, might look like. Here's the range that we probably want to be in. So always, always agree. Okay. 
So objections that we're commonly hearing in, in the marketplace is Zillow says it's worth more. I need to think about it. It's not a good time. The market's going to crash. How much do you charge? I was just on a phone call today uh, with, uh, with a lady. It was actually a referral from another agent in the Bay. And um, so typically referrals are stronger, right? Can we agree? Like they're like, there's, there's a connection there already. And she's already starting to hit me up on commission. And I'm like, well, here we go. Okay. And so the basic framework framework for responding to objections is one, you want to agree. You want to speak to that person's point of view. So that's kind of what you were speaking about, Barton, is, you know, repeating back to them what they said, ask a basic question or statement, give some value, and then, and then gain agreement. So what would that look like? Hey, will you lower your commissions? Hey, great question. Great question. Mr. Still, I want to make sure, uh, or you want to make sure you want to make the most money possible from the sale of your home. Is that correct? Okay, there are plenty of agents out there who would discount their commissions in a second if it meant that they would earn your business. May, may I share why that's a red flag? And then you can just give the commission breakdown, um, commonly like the, the thirds, right? So one third is going to the broker, one third is going to taxes, and that remaining third is what the agent has to live off of and market your home with. And if they're going to have to, they have to give a third to the broker, they're going to have to give a third to taxes. And they have to choose between paying their mortgage, paying for school, putting shoes on their kids' feet and food on the table, or having an extra little, you know, marketing budget. Which do you think they're going to choose? Probably going to trim, cut, cut some of the marketing budget down. Okay, so that's one way you can do it. And then um, another way you can do it. You, another another common objection is we want to interview other agents, or, or essentially we need to think about it. So sometimes they'll tell you, hey, we're interviewing other agents. Sometimes they'll tell you, hey, we just need to think about it. And uh, what they really mean is they're interviewing other agents and they just don't want to tell you. Can we agree on that? And so I was like, oh, man, I wish we would just have honest conversations when we're, when we're, um, when we're meeting with people. And so, hey, th hey, that makes sense. You know, if I was you, I'd want to interview other agents as well. Um, by the way, today's meeting is just a high level overview of everything that we do for our clients. Is there anything missing that's important to you? And this is, this is a very key question to ask because there may be something totally obvious to you, but isn't obvious to the buyer. The example I shared recently, um, I picked up from Rick Jiha. Um, for those of you who knew, who knew him, he was a fantastic, uh, wonderful man and an incredible salesperson. And he would tell this story about the super lock boxes and how he lost the listing because the agent that came behind him, the second agent they were interviewing, said they were going to install this special lock box that had a code that only real estate agents can use. And they'll, they'll be able to track when people enter the home, when they leave the home. It's going to have their license information. It's going to have their phone number and contact information. And they just felt like that other agent was a step above Rick because um, he just had this special, this special lock box. And Rick was like, oh, you got to be freaking kidding me. We all have access to those. Okay. And so you just want to make sure that there's nothing missing that maybe you think is kind of a given, but to them it's not. Okay. And you can roll into this. So typically when somebody needs to think about it, it's, it tends to be one or more of these three things. Do you mind if I share these three things with you? Okay. One is our, is our marketing and pricing strategy. Is that something you feel 100% com comfortable and confident in? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, you know, I'm, I'm with you on that. That's good. All right. And then the second question is sometimes it comes down to compensation and our cancel anytime guarantee. Do you think that's fair to you? Okay. So I'm asking about commissions and I'm also, you know, trying to soften the blow a little bit with our cancel anytime guarantee. I'm like, yeah, hey, that made perfect sense. All right. And then, well, then the last question is, are you confident that I'm the best person to represent you in the sale of your home? Yeah, Johnny, you're great. You know, we think you're really good. We just want to do some more due diligence. Okay. All right. So just so we're recapping, you want to do your due, due diligence and interview other agents to make sure you're picking the rest, the best one before you make a final decision. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. So why don't we go ahead and start the process so I can begin pre-marketing your home. In the meantime, you continue to interview other agents. If you, if you find through the interview process, there's somebody else you would prefer to work with, just give me a call up. We'll rip up the contract and we'll part as friends. Sound fair enough? Right? And so um, you're just removing, you're removing that friction and you're just pushing forward down the path of the sale. 
Um, is this, are these two things, is this helpful? Have you picked up any gold nuggets? So those, those are some things that we can talk about on seller sides. Um, are there any other suggestions? I mean, we'll keep it real short, but is there any other objections, any gold from the group that you would like just to share just one quick sentence on maybe how you handle a seller objection? Can you go back the screen just for a second? Thank you. Yeah, sure. Everybody smile. All right. <laughs> All right. So here we'll move on real quick. We want to keep it going. So magic questions. Um, this is another phrase that I picked up from a, a sales book. Um, I don't remember the title. He's British. That's all I got. But um, he had this phrase, magic questions. And these are questions that just are just so powerful. So one magic question would be, do you know how to market a property to get buyers to overpay for a home? Because now you're planting doubt. Now you're like, hmm, I'm going to sell it on my own. Or, um, hey, do you know how to find off market properties? Because if you're shopping, you know, what's on the MLS, a lot of times that's left. Those are the leftovers. Now you're planting doubt. Okay. And, and you have the solution. You have the value. You're the reason why they should, uh, you have, you have resources that make you different from maybe other agents they're working with. Okay. And then another magic question would be, are you familiar with our flexible commission program? I just used that today with that referral person. She's like, no, what, what's it about? And, um, and I, I broke through, I broke down the different, you know, the different things. And um, she was a tough, tougher case. Oftentimes I say, hey, that's the first thing we'll cover when we meet in person. When's good? Later today or tomorrow morning. Okay. So are you familiar with our flexible commission program? And so you can make it up. So a flexible commission program could be if you represent both the buyer and the seller off market, like it's their neighbor that's buying the home, maybe you do it for a 3% total. Okay. If you represent both the buyer and the seller, maybe instead of charging six, you do it for five. Now, now you have now you're giving them options. So there's there's a three, there's a five, there's the the, the more common six. And then maybe if you go a pre pre-owned home option, or maybe you're paying for some inspections up front, maybe you're putting a home warranty on the property, maybe you charge seven. Okay, so it's it's flexible. And then a uh, last another magic question is. What is the other agent going to do for that reduced commission? So, you know, if, if they're interviewing other agents who are looking to purchase a home or maybe sell a home, what is that other agent going to do for X? Because oftentimes they think that we're all the same. They think we provide all the same services. But here uh, on the Made for More team, on Brent's team, the first thing we do is we, we send a stager out to the home. Right. And they and they provide a consultation free of charge. We put a listing warranty on the home. We have eight people that work for us full time who will canvas the neighborhood proactively looking for people. We'll do postcard drops. We do digital marketing. We do radio advertising. We have a database of over 15,000 buyers. We'll follow up every single week with market updates. And you can cancel at any time. Right. So we're doing all these other things. I do this. Somebody else may do something completely different, but in the customer's eyes, we're all doing the same thing. So we have to make sure, hey, what is that other agent going to do for X? So that way you understand and you can highlight the differences between yourself and that other person you're competing against. Does that make sense? Wonderful. And then you guys have just a couple more, couple more minutes, you have five more minutes. Okay. So... A lot of those tend to, you know, you can use them for both sellers and buyers, but they were leaning more towards the seller side. So for buyer objections, you want to, this is, this is from Dale Archdeacon. This is where I learned this. Um, you want to ask instead of why, like what's the benefit, what's important or what's the advantage? Hey, you know what? We're going to, we're going to wait to make a move. We're going to wait to buy the house. Hey, you know what? That's totally fine. No pressure. We're a no pressure company, but what's, what's just so I understand what's, what's the benefit? to waiting till after summer to purchase a home? What's the advantage to waiting until the kids are out of, you know, the kids are out of school? I think I understand where you're coming from, but there might be something I'm missing. What's, what's the benefit importance and what's the advantage? So those are some good, good digging questions to kind of understand, maybe have more open and honest conversations about what the prospect's really thinking about. And then if they say they give you, you know, a benefit, then say, hey, okay, totally get anything else. Oh yeah, well, there's also this holding us back. Okay, great. So there's this and this, what else? 
and then they give you something else. And you got to, you got to keep, keep asking what else essentially until they run out of what else is. Because if you dig deep enough, you start peeling back the layers of that onion, you start having more honest conversations. And it's really hard to build trust and rapport when there's that barrier there between what they're really thinking and, and what's, what they're communicating to you. And so just be asking what else, what else, what else, and then recap their answers. So um, again, begin with the end in mind, also Dale Archdeacon. So he calls it something else. I don't remember what he calls it, but essentially customers are always thinking, oh, you know what? I'm going to buy a home. I just want to make a move in like five months. So I'll, I'll contact you later when we're closer to the beginning. And they don't understand the amount of time and effort and energy it takes to be moved into a home in five months. They just take it. They just think, hey, you know what? It's like going down to the car lot. I want that one with, uh, with a home warranty and uh, let's move in. And so what you want to do is you want to begin with them in the home with that, with that happy moment and then work the process back so they understand the timelines. So when somebody says, hey, you know, we're going we're gonna to wait until spring, okay, or we're going to wait till fall. Okay, great. When you say fall, like, are you talking like beginning of October, end of you know, November? Like, what are you talking about, like, specifically? No, we'd like to, we're talking about beginning of October. Okay, great. So now you just compressed it down to what maybe you thought was the end of November, and they meant the beginning of October. Okay, so beginning of October, you'd like to have keys in hand? Like, yeah, yeah, okay, great. So to have keys in hand, the, the escrow process, what we're seeing right now is typically between 20 and 30 days, you know, sometimes even 45 days. Are you are you aware of that? No, I didn't know that. Okay, yes. So that's normal. So if you want to be moved in in October, that means, you know, we'd have to be in contract. We'd have to be, be starting the escrow process middle of August, right? And so are you familiar, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, about how long it's taking for us to find the perfect home? For clients in today's marketplace? Uh, no, no. You know, like, is it, how long is it taking? Well, it depends. We don't want you to be rushed. We want you to pick the home that's absolutely best for you. So in order to have that time to do that in today's marketplace, it can take some, you know, 60 to 90 days with today's limited inventory. So that means, you know, you'd want to have identify, you'd want to start serious shopping so in order for us to be in contract by mid-August, July, June, you want to be, you know, start serious shopping somewhere around middle of May. Are you with me so far? Okay. And so in order to start serious shopping, you're going to need to have your financial um, ducks in a row. And we're going to, we're going to also want to make sure that the property that you and I have sat down and put together a game plan so that way we can make this entire process smooth for you. Typically, you know, that can take an extra, you know, three to four weeks. So really it would make sense for us to sit down and put together a game plan, you know, no later than the middle of April. You know, is, is, you've seen how, how, how we have that timeline. And now all of a sudden they thought they didn't, you know, they didn't have to do anything till summer was over and vacations were done. And now they're realizing, hey, if, if I want to make this process seamless and simple, I really do need to begin sooner rather than later. So you can just work it back. And you can do the same thing with sellers. So begin with the end in mind. So that's just a brief overview of what we had um, to go over today. Was this helpful? Juicy. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Okay. Good, good. Well, hey, give give Dale Archdeacon some love if you find him on YouTube. I know he's got some great stuff. Um, any questions or comments for the good of the group before we end the call? That was like dynamite. Thank you. Loved it. Awesome. I love the positive feedback. Thank you. For those of you who didn't like it, thank you for being quiet. I appreciate it. You're, you're good <laughs> critics. You're client you're I got to tell you too, Johnny, that I've already been thinking about just the last few comments about the uh, – the um being with the end in mind uh for open house conversations i had last week you know there were three out of nine groups were already saying no no we're gonna wait till interest rates come down or we're gonna wait till the end of the year and so it was such good information right here is how to help them accelerate by allowing them to feel the pressure of time not me saying wow you have to start today right yes so Great, great, great way to bring those conversations with uh, current open house uh, shoppers uh, to the front. Thank you. Absolutely. And a good way to handle that, that, um, 
that objection as well. Hey, we're waiting for lower interest rates. Hey, I totally hear you. You like the lower the interest rates, the better it is for me and for you. Um, but when you say interest rates, like lower interest rates, what 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 percentage are you shooting for? Because now it's not just some lower interest rate, you know, nebulous concept. It's like, you know what, if I can get interest rate in the sixes or the high fives, you know, I think that would that would make financial sense for me. Yeah. Great. You know, my lender has this fantastic program where he's able to get you rates in the fives right now. If I if if he was able to do that for you, you know, would it would it make sense to have a quick five minute conversation with him? He won't pull your credit, he won't do anything. It's just just to see if he can get you in the fives. Because they can do the two one buy down, right? So if they're in the sevens, yeah. they're you know, fives are possible. So, anyways. Brilliant. All right, Tim. I don't want to hold I don't want to hold you up, but thank you so much for hopping on. Hope this was valuable and uh, we'll see you next time.